Hello everyone, I'm Emma Urquhart, an accessibility consultant at Atos, and it's time for a quick introduction to voice recognition and accessibility. Welcome to the future. It can be a little hard to recognise how far technology has come when living your normal daily life, and voice recognition is a key example of that. In Star Trek, controlling a computer with a hello computer was the thing of science fiction. Now you can easily ask your Amazon or Google Home device to turn on your PC. But what is voice recognition, or speech recognition as it's often called? It's when a computer system decodes a human voice. It's often used to operate a machine or gadget, perform a task, or to write without needing to use a keyboard, mouse or physical buttons. Before I carry on, let's quickly talk terminology. Speech recognition and voice recognition are actually different functions, but your average Joe tends to use it interchangeably. If we're going to be a bit nerdy and pedantic about it, and we definitely are, speech recognition is the act of turning speech into commands or text, and voice recognition tells users apart. If you're dictating a document into Google Docs, that's speech recognition. But if you're unlocking your smartphone or telling your Amazon device to play the top 50, that's voice recognition identifying who you are, pulling up your user profile, and then switching into the speech recognition library to understand your command and your voice. Like with all technology, there's overlap, and voice recognition is often a bonus feature added on top of already solid speech recognition. For this talk, I'll be using voice recognition as a catch-all term. Voice recognition breaks down into two main categories, voice control or voice assistance, which interpret your words as a command to a piece of software or a device. Secondly, there's dictation or voice to text, which will translate your spoken words into a written document. Amazon devices, Google Assistant and Siri are currently leading sales in the voice control market while Drag and Dictate for Windows and the smartphone app Otter are my favourites from the dictation market. Voice recognition is absolutely everywhere. It's in cars, on phones with Siri and Google Assistant, it's on your PC, it's used for subtitling live TV as a dictation tool in medical and legal jobs and around your home through Google and Amazon smart speakers. As for who's using it, I'll split it into two groups people who depend on voice recognition, and people who use it professionally or casually but aren't dependent on it. Dependent on it are people with physical disabilities, chronic conditions like RSI, cognitive and learning disabilities, or temporary disabilities like a broken arm or collarbone. Even being the parent of a young child can cause a temporary disability. Many parents find themselves reliant on voice recognition when their hands are busy holding a newborn. You can use voice recognition to control a computer if you have a mobility impairment, if you're paralysed, or if you have a tremor. And voice recognition really shines for people lacking the use of one or both hands because of congenital disability or amputation. Another big user group for voice recognition is elderly users. It's a rapidly growing market and they can face impairments visually, physically and mentally as they age. There's also dyslexic users who can benefit a lot from using voice recognition and not needing to use text-heavy interfaces. There are also workplaces that are becoming reliant on voice recognition. The legal world is using it for court transcripts, the medical world for reporting, live TV is using it for subtitling their broadcasts as they come out, even nuclear facilities are using it to operate software while wearing thick protective equipment. More casual users include smartphone and home assistant users using voice recognition to send commands, travellers using translation apps to convert voices, students recording lectures into dictation apps so they can review the results later, and power users or productivity users who harness dictation and voice control to increase productivity. This group includes writers who report a much faster word per minute rate when they're using dictation software as opposed to typing on a keyboard. Many voice recognition tools build their reputation as an accessibility aid, benefiting from the community's loyalty and willingness to be early adopters of less than perfect software. But in the last few years, voice recognition has moved into a much wider market. 
As an example, Apple's Siri is powered by a speech recognition engine provided by the team behind accessibility and dictation tool Dragon. The voice market is expected to keep on rising. There's 100 million Alexas sold so far and a projected US revenue of 7.8 billion by 2023. In Britain, the market for working age accessibility impaired consumers is sitting at 7 million people and £250 billion spending power. Growing corporate use includes recognising user choices on phone menus at doctor's surgeries, at call centres, banking phone lines and when you're renewing your phone contract. Audio storytelling, which was already on the rise through podcasts, has found an eager market in voice-enabled speakers and is expanding into choose-your-own-adventure-style gaming on the Alexa. Robocallers are becoming an increasing nuisance with their ability to fake responses to callers. But on the bright side, I can tell my Amazon device to stick the robot Hoover on downstairs. Few good things come without downsides. And with voice recognition, it's not just robocalls you have to worry about. There's well-known problems with recognising unfamiliar accents, say a fine Scottish brogue, or speech impairments. There's also big privacy concerns about who can listen to the recordings, and questions that need to be answered as to how voice recognition can keep improving without either needing too much training from the user or invading the user's privacy. Voice recognition is an essential tool for some, and a useful tool for all. I'm really looking forward to seeing how this field continues growing. Thank you.